And Laura Jarrett is here with me, our senior legal analyst and uh, all things expert on all things involving this case. <laughs> Laura, we are still waiting for the big unsealing of the yes. indictment, which could be you know, sort of an anticlimax because we may not see that much in it because there are, it could be a speaking indictment yeah. which goes through the whole case and a lot of the evidence, or it could be very plain vanilla bare bones. Yeah, we just don't know yet at this point which version, which route they're going to take. Uh, you know, Vaughn mentioned the former CFO of the Trump Organization, Alan Weisselberg. In that case, the indictment ran over 25 pages. Um, and some of it is boilerplate, just rehearsing the counts, but some of it does tell a story. And that's one of the things I think you want to look for when, in fact, this indictment is unsealed. Now, the timing of when this gets unsealed is something we are digging at a lot today and just trying to figure out exactly when that will happen. Typically, um, it, you know, it happens around the time of the actual arraignment, but you need to have the indictment actually unsealed so that everyone can talk about it in open court tomorrow. And if he's being arraigned sometime tomorrow afternoon, presumably it has to happen sometime before then. And so we're trying to get at exactly when we might see that. Would it happen in the morning? Would it happen just before. That's one of the things we're, we're trying to find out. Obviously, you know, we have reported and other outlets have reported um, some level of detail about the actual indictment, not the precise charges, but that we know it has to do with business records document fraud, um, roughly 30 charges. Uh, but it, we need to see the actual counts and the actual level of detail to be able, obviously, to provide some full analysis about what all is there. And we believe that the centerpiece of all of this is the hush money payments, how they were recorded, how the, they were repaid. We've seen the checks, but how they were accounted. Yes, it's important to understand that it's not the hush money itself, right? That That is, is not illegal under New York law. It's how it gets documented on the books of the Trump Organization. And that's why in the indictment itself, it'll be interesting to see what level of detail the district attorney provides about how it came to understand that legal expenses are written on the books and records. Is it written on some general ledger that never leaves the Trump Organization? Or is it written on a document that actually did go to some tax agency? Uh, the president, former president's lawyers have said that he didn't take a tax deduction uh, on these payments, but we need to understand that. We need to not just hear it from the former president's lawyers. We need to see in the indictment how it's described, what level of detail they're willing to provide, and what documentation they have to back up the word of Michael Cohen. Remember, they can't just use Michael Cohen, obviously, as a witness in this case. They need to actually have documentation to back up what he's saying to uh, essentially bolster his, his testimony in his case. And we don't know if one other woman who claimed that she had an affair with Donald Trump, which he has denied, uh, whether she is part of this because she right. received, I believe, $150,000 right. uh, from the from yes. From the newspaper. Yes. And so catch that and, deal is. Catch and kill deal. Exactly. And that's an interesting one because she didn't actually receive any money from Trump or Michael Cohen. She gets it from the publisher of the National Enquirer, who subsequently enters in a non prosecution agreement with federal prosecutors. And has been a witness before yes. the grand jury. Well, we don't, under, we don't know whether she has actually appeared in front of the grand jury. No, I mean, David Pecker, the publisher. Yes. Yes. The publisher, Former as publisher. well as the New York Times has reported that Keith Davidson, the lawyer for both Karen McDougal uh, and one. One time, Stormy Daniel, t t actually her attorney as well at one point. So it'll be interesting to see, again, what more we can learn about whether the Karen McDougal situation is related to a charge or is it just there to show a pattern and practice of behavior? It was really interesting that Joe Takapina over the weekend and on the Today Show was not expressing problems with Judge Juan Michon, yeah. the federal judge, but the former president was on social media. So. How much, how abusive can he be on social media about the judge, the prosecutor, the prosecutor's wife, uh, without a gag order or some admonishment from Judge Mershon tomorrow? Yeah, I've, I've talked to a lot of folks about this in the last couple of days, given the gravity of, of what's at issue here, given some of the things that he's been posting on Truth Social, especially comments uh, made about the judge. Obviously, this is a judge that has a history with Trump and the Trump Organization. He presided over the trial uh, of the Trump Organization and, as Vaughn mentioned, that guilty plea for Alan Weisselberg. So there is a history here. But everyone has described him as a fair and impartial 
trial. He runs a tight ship, I'm told, in his courtroom. Um, as for whether, in fact, he will impose a gag order, I, I think that is a high threshold for somebody who is seeking public office, running to be the next president of the United States. I, it would be hard, uh, I think, for a lot of folks that I talk to, to see him impo imposing one without more at this point. He might do something of a warning to everyone in court yesterday and say, basically, you're on notice that you need to be careful about your public statements tainting the jury pool. But, you know, typically gag orders are used by defendants who don't want prosecutors talking about the case because they might prejudice the jury pool. And in this case, it's Trump who's talking about the case and the judge. So it's one of the more unusual twists uh, that this case has shown us.